Enlightenment is just the recognition of the nature of being. You either recognize it or you don't. That's it. How did Ramana do that's, that's it? What, that's what Ramana did. He, he was a 16-year-old boy. He suddenly became spontaneously overcome by the fear of death. And he, he thought he was going to die. He never thought about any of these matters before, so he said, OK, I'll lie down on my bed and see what it's like to die. So he just lay, lay down on, the, on his bed and said to himself, I'm paraphrasing now, not quoting, he said, OK, well, what, what's going to happen? I'm going to die. I'm going to, I'm going to lose my parents. I'm going to lose my brother. I'm going to lose my friends. I'm going to lose my thoughts. I'm going to lose my feelings. I'm going to lose my body. I'm going to lose my room. I'm going to lose my world. I'm going to lose everything. What will remain? And so intense was his in-question, what will remain, that that question just took him directly to that which cannot be taken away from him, to his being. He recognized the nature of his being. And unlike the vast majority of us, for Ramana it wasn't just a glimpse. He just went there once and stayed there for the rest of his life. Most of us go there briefly and then our attention is pulled out again by thoughts and feelings. So out of compassion for us, he developed this process which he called self-inquiry. Self he didn't call it self-inquiry, but he emphasized self-inquiry, which was a, a, a means of rehearsing the process that he had spontaneously gone through as a 16-year-old boy. What will remain of me when everything that can be removed from me is removed of me? My being. So he provided a pathway whereby we could ask ourselves a question such as, am I aware, or who am I really, or really, or where do my thoughts come from, or what is it that is aware of my experience? These simple questions that have the capacity to take us directly from our current experience back to our being, the, the experience that he went through spontaneously. But he only had to go through it once. Most of us have to go through it quite a few times. But what he recognized, the nature of his being, was exactly the same that we recognize when we here take the thought, I am, for instance, and allow ourselves to be drawn into its referent. That's it. That's enlightenment, the recognition of the nature of being. There are no degrees of it. There's no development of it. It's just a recognition. How that recognition plays out in our lives varies from people to people. and, and there is a, a progression to how our lives are impacted by that recognition. Our thoughts, feelings, actions, relationships, perceptions, these are all impacted gradually and progressively by this recognition. And it, the, how our lives are impacted by this recognition varies from people to people. Some people develop cities, some people become, become great artists, some people go home and look after their family, some people never speak about it. So there are all sorts of ways that this recognition can, can impact our lives, but the recognition itself is just, just the simple recognition of the nature of being. That's it. Hi, Rupert. Hi, Manny. It's not a question, it's just a comment. Um, if you remember, I don't know if you remember, but some months ago I had asked you, in a, I, I told you in a webinar that now I have access to the stillness, I can go to that stillness. And, yes. And, um, but, but somehow I could not make the connection that I was that stillness. Yes, oh. I remember, yes. Yeah, and you, you said, oh, it'll sneak up on you, don't worry about it. Uh, yesterday, it did sneak up in a way. Mm -hmm. That's what I wanted to say oh. uh, in the cat meditation. <laughs> <laughs> the cat sneaked up on you? <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, the cat did, not you. No, no, the cat, yeah. <laughs> so, so, there was a line you said, um, that, that started this whole process. Um, you said, the cat does not know it's a cat. I, I don't know, for some reason, I started doing this um, proof by reduction, uh, where I said, 
oh okay i do not know i am a human being i'm not support i'm i'm supposed to not know i am a human being great then it said oh then what am i then i it said i mean it said uh, i'm a living organism then it said oh i'm not supposed to know i am an organism <laughs> okay then it said i'm not supposed to know i'm living then it said i'm not supposed to know i am then it said no 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 that's not possible <laughs> so so i know i am and then i it said you dimwit you are the knowing so so it was that that whole process and then that that i went through and finally it is like i am the knowing oh uh, but there were no fireworks or anything it was just <laughs> it was just <laughs> i just smiled and i liked it a lot <laughs> <laughs> that's it you just there's just this process you go through there's just this clear recognition yeah and in response to it you just smile and like it a lot that's yeah. it that's all it is <laughs> yeah but uh, but I, but i don't want you to take the credit no no i will <laughs> give the <laughs> give, give the cat the credit okay <laughs> that's all i want to say thank you thank you so much <laughs> yeah thank you very much mani during these sessions i do realize that the being is going to give that ultimate peace that i was looking when i am in the being but when we go to the external the finite world you still will have those emotions but how how to kind of balance these emotions do i understand this right that the more i experience the being they will naturally be balanced yes Or, yes because because your being being can't be hurt imagine you're a newborn infant you haven't had any experience yet your eyes are closed and but your pri- your very first experience before you're aware of uh, a sensation a perception of of course a thought and so on you're, you're aware of simply being simply being is your your primary experience yes uh, take a snapshot imagine you take a snapshot of the awareness of being mm. just after you're born Yeah? yeah fast forward you're on your deathbed mm-hmm. it's 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 two o'clock in the morning it's dark it's silent your body's comfortable you're not aware of any experience but you're aware of being mm-hmm. okay now take a snapshot of the awareness of being on your deathbed now compare these two experiences what's the difference between them there's no difference absolutely none think of all the experiences especially the difficult painful ones that have taken place throughout your life was your being hurt by them that didn't change it didn't change so i i i say that to, so that you really understand experientially that being cannot be hurt being is never hurt so when now to go back to your answer when you're you're faced with a situation someone says something that is potentially hurtful um, that you would previously have considered inherently hurtful mm-hmm. and as a result this emotion is provoked by it but then you immediately remember not to get busy with the emotion arguing attributing the hurt mm-hmm. to the person or to what they said you remember your being so instead of stepping forward from the emotion to the person 
you step backwards from the emotion to your being and you immediately taste okay. it, it's, its peace. And as a result, the, the emotion can no longer stand because it's no longer supported by your belief that it was caused by the person's words. It was caused by the fact that you overlooked yeah. the innate peace of your being. You go back to your being and the emotion drops. So, when you get accustomed to doing that, the, 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 this um, reactive emotion, it, it, it's provoked less and less often in your life. It may still be provoked, but less often. And when it is provoked, it lasts for less time because you're so practiced at going back to your being. It rises up and it, it doesn't last three days, it lasts three minutes, and then it doesn't last three seconds, it lasts three, three minutes, it lasts three seconds. And then after, after a while you feel the impulse, you feel the, the energy of the emotion arising. Ah, it's just got nothing to support it, it just drops again. I guess I have experienced that too, that's true, yeah. So the more, the more I start yeah. you just to keep, experience keep of being. To, yeah. but, but really experientially, like when we did this experiment with the awareness of being on your, yeah. just being born, I could tell that you, you, you really tasted for, your, for yourself that throughout your life, the nature of your being, it had never been hurt by experience. So you, that, that's good, you, you've tasted, you know that. So you can go back there and you just become more and more familiar with this inherently peaceful, unhurtable nature of your being. Make, make that your home. Make it where you live. Okay. Okay. So the lesser stories to nag on then? Sorry? That'll make it lesser stories to nag on to. L lesser stories? stories. Yes, 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 exactly. Thank you. Yes, what do you know for absolute certain? That I am. Anything else? You, you're quite right. That's the first thing you know for absolute certain. Absolute certainty is, is there anything else you know with the same degree of certainty that you know that I am? Let, let, let's say even, let's say the Buddha, Ramana Maharshi, and someone were to appear now, and, and sorry, tell me your name again. Melissa. Melissa. Say to you, Melissa, you're wrong. Hmm? You, you are not. <laughs> you, you, you said to the Buddha, I am. And, and he said, no, I'm sorry, you're wrong. Let me explain. And then what would you say to him? I would say, it feels like I am. No, you wouldn't. I wouldn't? You, you wouldn't, no. No. You'd say, I'm sorry. Buddha, with, with the greatest respect, but I know that I am. So please don't try to persuade me otherwise. You wouldn't even listen. Even if the Buddha were to try to persuade you, I am not. Your own certainty that you are is, is, it w would withstand being tested by the Buddha or Jesus Christ. Or if God himself were to appear before you and say, no, Melissa, you are not. The experience, I am, is false. What would you say to God? You'd say, no, I'm sorry, you're wrong. I know for absolute certain that I am. I may not know what I am, but I know that I am. That the knowledge I am is absolutely certain. Now, do you know anything else with the same degree of certainty that you know that I am. Mm, I can't find anything. Exactly, yeah. So are you saying when, I, when I'm thinking I know something other than that, that... 
Well, it's okay to provisionally know something, but don't ascribe to it the same degree of certainty that you ascribe to the knowledge I am. You know that you're in garrison now. But you can't be completely sure. <laughs> because you might be in Chicago having a dream that you're in garrison. Mm. You can't be sure. You're pretty sure, but you're not sure with the same degree of certainty that you are sure that I am. So it's fine to know that you're in garrison. I'm not suggesting you should give up that provisional knowledge. It, it, it's legitimate provisional knowledge, but it's not, it, it doesn't have the same degree of certainty to it as I am, the knowledge I am. The knowledge I am is, is absolute knowledge. It's the only knowledge there is that's not relative to the finite mind through which it is known. That's why I said that this morning, the only knowledge there is that, that is not mediated through the finite mind, through thinking and perceiving, is the awareness of being. So the awareness of being has a degree of certainty to it. It is, it is absolutely true. It is not relative to the finite mind through which it is known. This mm -hmm. world, the, the, the fact that the world is a world it is relative to the finite mind that knows the world. If your finite mind wasn't configured in terms of um, thinking and perceiving, but was configured in terms of Xing, Ying, and Zing, then you would not perceive reality as a world. So your knowledge of the world is relative to your finite mind, but the awareness of being is not relative to the finite mind. It is absolute knowledge. Even the alien, whose mind that doesn't consist of thinking and perceiving, it consists of Xing, Ying, and Zing. It still has the experience I am. And that experience is identical to your experience I am. And that may be the only experience you have in common. So just keep coming back to that. Yes. Make that your ground. Yeah. The place you come back to. Yeah. And when things pull in life or, or whatever, just keep coming back to that and operate from, from there as much as Yes, yes. De possible. Deal appropriately with whatever uh, comes up in life. I'm not saying you should disregard it or not, not um, attend to it appropriately. But, but hold the provisional truths that the mind present us with lightly. Mark, and um, recently I've been reading a lot of John Wheeler, who was a student, as you know, of Sailor Bob Adamson, who was a student of Nisargadatta. It's a really radical approach, or at least I used to think so until just very recently this week. Uh, it's a take no prisoners teaching because it is purely about staying about in the non in the non-conceptual. And there is no forgiveness for, for that. It's unabashedly the non-conceptual. And that's exactly what we've been doing, and I recognize now over the last year or two, but certainly this week, starting in being, staying in being, and not deviating from that path. And this week has been amazing in aligning with what I've been reading and how it's been going over the last year or two in this teaching. And then it culminated um, during today's meditation all the way through until the very end, before Beethoven, when you said, there is no unveiling, there is no ignorance. And it was like, it was like a coiled spring that just sprung up and just like released into this white radiance it was so peaceful, so beautiful, so sublime that it's like all these concepts were just, have been 
permanently discarded and it's just over the last so many years where I've been trying to live in the world with is the last steps of the direct path to go out in the world with the outshining of your true nature and, and share being. But what I felt today, it's like, oh no, just stay in pure being. Don't get off that couch. In fact, go to a cave in India and don't move from there. But yes, there's this pull to somehow reconcile those two, dare I say it, concepts which are not. Of to, to reconcile the, the, the of two concepts. The, uh, of staying in pure being and yet going out in the world with the outshining of my true nature. And so I do want to get off the couch and... But, but, but Mark, the, the, the world is only an appearance right. of being, of, of the activity of being. Right. So, wherever you go, you, 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 you go in being. So you, you never, it doesn't matter whether you go outwards or inwards. We only go inwards when the world, in the early stages of the investigation, when the world is a physical world, when we consider the world a physical world that is a distraction from or a veiling of its reality. And then in order to access the reality of the world, we can't go outwards because our only knowledge of that world is through thinking and perceiving, as I explained this morning, you have to go inwards through the portal I am. You have to examine the full moon and discover the white paper. So that gives you access. That, that is our direct portal to reality. But then, having recognized the nature of being in ourself and its infinite nature, then we, we, we understand that the being, our being is not really our being. It, it spreads out way beyond the limitations of our own finite minds and the bodies, like the white paper doesn't just shine as the full moon in the painting, it is the background of the entire landscape. So then we realize that the world is actually an appearance of the same being that shines in us as the knowledge I am. And that's what I meant when I said towards the end of this, this morning that it's not that the world veils its reality. To begin with, if we deeply believe, as most people do, that the world is a physical world, then that apparently physical world will veil its reality, and therefore we have to turn away from it and go inwards. But then, later on, at the level we were speaking of this morning, at the level we tend to stay nowadays in this teaching, the world is no longer considered a physical world. It is, a, it is how the activity of being appears from our localized perspective. At that, at that stage of understanding, the world becomes transparent to its reality. In the first step, it's like believing that the landscape in the movie is real in its own right. If we think the landscape in the movie is real in its own right, it will seem to veil the screen and we will have to turn the movie off to see the screen. We turn the movie off, we see the screen, then we turn the movie back on again. But now we see the landscape as the screen. So the, the, the landscape has lost its capacity to veil its reality. In fact, it was never the landscape that veiled the screen. It, it, it was our belief that the landscape was real that seemed to veil the screen. That's what I was trying to draw attention to at the end this morning. It is not the world that veils its reality. It is the belief that the world is real as a world, as a collection of physical objects. It's the belief that the world is physical that seems to veil its reality. Once that belief has gone, the world that once seemed to veil its reality now shines as that reality. Remember William Blake when he was trying to explain this, some of you 
some of the old timers know this off by heart. When when he was you do when he was trying to explain this to one of his materialist friends, and his materialist friend said to him, "Do you mean to say that when you see the sun, you do not see a round disk of fire, somewhat like a guinea?" And to which William Blake replied, "Oh no, no, no! I see an innumerable company of the heavenly host crying, glory, 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 as the Lord God Almighty." So what for one person looked like a physical object, a, a round sun, somewhat like a guinea, somewhat like a god. To William Blake, it was the shining of God's being. He would, they were seeing the same thing. For one of them, it ve- one of them, it, their belief that it was a physical object veiled its reality as the face of God. But William Blake no longer had that belief, so the sun was transparent to its real, reality and shone as that reality, as the face of God. It's not the world. The problem is not the world. The world is the shining of, 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 of the infinite. It is the mind's belief that the world is physical that seems to veil its reality. No, I totally get it. I, it kind of sounds like when I had the concept, go into the world with this out shining of being, there is no world to go on. Just keep staying in being. Just keep and staying and being and being. Right. See, see it, 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 you, it's being moving in being. Right. Th- then, you're, then you don't, it doesn't really matter. The, uh, there's no inside or outside then. It doesn't matter where you go, wherever you go, exactly. you are, you are a, um, a localization of being, seeing only the activity of being, seeing only your own self, the one infinite indivisible self, seeing itself as everything. I think I just clearly understood Shelley's poem of that white radiance shining through the multicolored dome. Yes. It's not like this dome stops the white radiance. It's now the white yeah. radiance is going through this little finite uh, mind, but it hasn't changed at all. It just has acquired a little bit of yeah. color, but the white radiance is still yeah. going through. Yeah, exactly. But the one remains, the many change and pass. Heaven's light forever shines, life like a dome of many colored glass stains the white radiance of eternity. Die if thou wouldst be with that which thou dost seek. <laughs>